If you're here because you're an artist and you want to start a YouTube channel for your art, you've come to the right video. Keep watching to hear what I've learned during my first year on YouTube, what I found that really worked well, what didn't work so well, and where I plan to take this channel in 2021. Even if you aren't an artist, I think these tips would still be helpful for anyone thinking about starting their own channel this year. First, I want to say welcome to my channel and thank you for being here. Without the community full of people like you, this place wouldn't be what it is. If you're new to my channel, my name is Noreen and I started my channel one year and one week ago. I mostly paint with watercolors, but I do dabble in other media such as ink, gouache, and acrylics. I had been thinking about starting an art channel for a really long time, but I had a lot of doubts, particularly about my own skills, what I had to offer, my ability to produce quality content, etc. I was and still am a huge consumer of art videos and follow many other artists here as I'm sure you do too. I just wanted to be part of a community that was passionate about creating art and sharing their knowledge with the world. What really got me to get moving was a video by Emily Artful, which I'll link in the description below. And it's all about how she got started. She talked about how she started with just a webcam and a tiny little corner table covered in brown paper. She didn't have any fancy equipment or anything like that. The thing is, it doesn't matter how you start. Every single person on this platform started somewhere and it was awful. It's not about that. What it's about is just starting. So just start. After I saw that video, I realized the only thing stopping me from going for it was my own fears and my own doubts. Of course, my first videos were awful. I could go on and on about all the things that are wrong with them. But the more videos I made, the more I learned, and the more I improved, and I'm still improving. You have to accept that your first few videos are going to be whatever they're going to be, and all that matters is that you make them. Just like how you learn to draw or paint, it took practice, and the more you practiced, the better you got. YouTube is the same way. I knew nothing about video editing or keywords or thumbnails, nothing. I learned on the fly. My first video was made using Windows Movie Maker, using the microphone in my laptop. Ugh. But from there, I researched different video editing softwares that were free and I tried a bunch of them and I watched a ton of reviews on YouTube. I'm currently using the free version of VSDC, which is a fantastic piece of software, and it's free. The amount of freedom and control that you have is quite honestly amazing. I highly recommend you check this one out. So what have I learned about making videos over the last year besides the technical stuff? Well, a lot. I've learned that you are rewarded for consistency, so that is number one. What that means is if you can get a video posted on a regular schedule, then you're likely to get more views and subscribers than if you only posted randomly every few months. For me, I started with posting every other week due to my work schedule, and I maintained that schedule through September. In October, I tried doing Inktober, and I had planned to do a video every four days. That was incredibly hectic for me, because not only did I still have to work full time, but I was still learning how to edit, so it took me forever. So even though I ended up enlisting the help of my cousin, who's a videographer, to help me with my editing, which was amazing, but also expensive, it was just too much for me to keep up with, and I got burned out really fast. What I learned from that experience is your second tip here, and that is don't bite off more than you can chew. Try to get at least one or two videos out a month, preferably one a week, but really go at your own pace and do what you can reasonably handle right now. There's always room to push yourself more once you get better at it. When I did Inktober, I didn't get much response to those videos. So that was a message to me that my subscribers weren't all that interested in ink work. Which brings me to the next thing I learned, and that is to pay attention to your metrics. If you switch things up and find you aren't getting as much of a response, then maybe you need to change what you're doing or how you're doing it. 
On the flip side, if you do switch things up and find out you're getting a much better response, then you're doing something right. Do more of that. But, and there's kind of a big but with this one, don't do something you don't love. That's the fastest way to get stressed and burnt out and give up on this YouTube thing. Even if you aren't getting a big response right now, that doesn't necessarily mean that your content isn't wanted. It may just mean you aren't reaching your intended audience. And that's my next tip. Figure out who you're talking to. Who are you making these videos for? Pick one person in your life that you feel really comfortable sharing what you know and what you want to do with. And make your video as though you're talking to that person. It was really awkward and weird for me at first, um, just talking to the air, but the more I did it, the more comfortable I got, and you will too. There's a lot of videos on YouTube about how to grow your audience, get more subscribers, how to get monetized, etc. I'm not an expert on those things, so I'd recommend you check out some of the great videos on here on those subjects. I've learned a lot over the last year about using keywords, how to make better thumbnails, and other things like that. But this video is really meant to help you get started with the very basics. You don't have to go out and buy a super expensive camera and all this other software. Phones these days are so amazing, you really can just use your phone to record. There's even a ton of free video editing apps that would allow you to edit your videos right on your phone. Again, there's so many great videos on YouTube that tell you all about those things. Definitely check them out. My last tip has to do with this. Research, research, research. Never stop learning. You don't have to know all the things all at once. What I did that really worked for me was each week or each video that I worked on, I would pick one or two things I really wanted to improve. And then I looked online for tutorials or videos on how to do those things better. One week I learned all about keywords and how they work and how to pick better ones. Another week I learned about how to make a better script and how to keep the viewer engaged and so on. I just kept trying to improve and understanding that my videos weren't going to be perfect. I was going to make mistakes, but I would learn from them and my next video would be better. Just keep going, stick with it, and I promise you it will get easier and you'll keep growing. My goal for this year is to hit that thousand subscriber mark and hopefully get monetized by the end of the year. If you like this video and want to help me reach this goal, make sure you like the video and subscribe to my channel so we can grow together. Thanks so much for watching. I hope these tips were helpful for you and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!